Okay, what's so special about this limit equation? As we can see, we have this term, h minus 2 and then to a third power, right? However, before we do anything, we should plug in 0 into all the h first to see what we have. And you know most likely it will be 0 over 0. Because life is not easy, we are going to do more work, right, most of the time. But anyway, let me show you guys the work. See? 0 over 0, we have to do more work. And now, what kind of work can we do though? Notice we have this big exponent. Let's just multiply out and then combine terms on the top to see what we have, right? So let me work this out for you guys. For h minus 2 to the third power, let me just write it down three times and I will multiply it out for you guys, alright? And yes, there's a formula for multiply things out like that, the Pascal's triangle, the binomial theorem, or whatsoever. But I think this is more clear for everybody, right? for the h minus 2 and then to a third power, right? Therefore, this is equal to the limit as h goes to 0, and we'll first put that down, which is the h to the third power minus 6h squared plus 12h and then minus 8. And what do we have next? Well, we can just multiply the negative 5 into the parentheses. Therefore, we get negative 5h plus 10, right? So just distribute. At the end, don't forget to put down the minus 2. So we have the minus 2 right here. All this is over the h. And now, let's see if there's anything that we can do to combine like terms on the top. As we noticed, this is 12h, and this is negative 5h. So we can combine terms, right? And let's do that. In fact, these two terms stays, right? So let me just write this down. We have the h to the third power, minus 6h squared, but this and that is going to give us plus 7h. And how about the numbers? Negative 8 plus 10 is positive 2. And then minus 2, which we get 0. So we don't have any more constants. And now this is what we have. But if you look at on the top, this is h to the third power. And here we have h squared. And this is another h. We can factor on h, right? So let's go ahead and do that. h to the front. And then we will have h squared minus 6h, and then at the end, it's just a plus 7. Now, what good does that do? Well, this is the best part, because something on the top is about to cancel out something on the bottom. We can cancel out this h and that h, right? So all in all, we're just talking about, let's go ahead and calculate the limit as h goes to 0. The expression is just h squared minus 6h plus 7 now. At the end, of plugging 0 into all the h. So we see this is 0 squared minus 6 times 0, and then plus 7. Work this out. Of course, at the end, we get that lucky number 7. That's it. Let's look at this limit. Of course, we're plugging this 5 into all the x first, right? 0 over 0. We have to do more work. What kind of work do we have to do, though? We notice that on the top is a binomial, likewise it's also a binomial on the bottom, so we should try to factor things out and cancel it out, right? Well, the top is okay to factor because we have two terms, and here we have the 5, and this is 125, so we can factor out a common factor first. So, when we take out 5, we will have x squared, and originally this was minus 125 divided by 5, so we have minus 25 left. And now you see, x squared minus 25 is a difference of two squares, so we can factor this as the 5 in the front, and this is going to be x minus 5 times x plus 5, just like that. So we're done on the top. How about on the bottom? How can we factor a difference of two cubes? And now, that's a formula you have to remember. Once in a while, you have to deal with factoring the sum or the difference of two cubes when we are doing limits, algebraic, all right? So let me write down the formula for you guys. The first one is a to the third power minus b to the third power. This right here is equal to a minus b, and then you multiply by a squared plus ab, and then 
plus b square. This is the formula for that. And let me also write down the plus version, just in case maybe sometimes you have to deal with the sum of two cubes. So the plus version is that when we have a to the third power plus b to the third power, this is equal to a plus b, and then you have a square minus a b, and then at the end you have minus you have plus b square, like this. Okay. So you see, this is minus minus plus. This is plus plus minus. At the end, for the b square part, it's always plus. All right. So anyway, we'll be utilizing the first one right here. And to do so, let me just rewrite it. This is x to the third power, right? And then we have minus 125. It's the same as saying 5 to the third power. So x is my a, 5 is my b. Therefore, the first factor, it will be x minus 5, right? And next, we have what? We will have a squared, which is going to give us x squared, and then we add a b. So that means we have to do x times 5. And of course, let's put that down as 5x. At the end, we have what? Plus b squared. b is 5. You have to square that. 5 times 5, which is 25. Okay, And once again, this right here is because we did the 5 squared, like that. And as you can see, what happens? After we factored it, we are so lucky because this is x minus 5. This is also x minus 5. So we can cancel them out, isn't it? And now this is going to be the limit as x goes to 5. And then we will have this 5 times x plus 5 on the top, right? And then over x squared plus 5x and then plus 25, like this. At the end, you know the deal plugging this 5 into all the x. So we have 5 with the parentheses now, another 5 for this x value, and then plus this 5 over 5 squared, right, like this, and then plus this 5 times this 5, and then plus 25. Okay? And now let's see what we have. This is 5 times 5 plus 5, which is 10, times 5, which is 50. On the bottom, let's see what we have. This is 5 squared, so that's 25. This is 5 times 5, it's also 25. 25 plus 25 is 50, plus another 25 is 75. So altogether it is 75 on the bottom. And 50 over 75, we know 25 goes into 50 twice, 25 goes into 75 three times. Altogether, the answer to this is 2 thirds, right? So that's it. Okay, we are going to calculate the limit as x goes to negative 2. x to the third power minus 5x minus 2 over x plus 2. And yes, this is an x to the third power term. Okay, so of course, let's just have that good habit, right? Plugging negative 2 into all the x. So let's do that real quick. This is still a 0 over 0 situation. We have to do more work. But if you look at the top, Yes, it's a trinomial, but this is a third power, right? So I cannot do the tic-tac-toe, I cannot do the usual fatting for you guys. And in this case, how can we simplify this though? Well, we have two ways to do it. One is that we can just go ahead and do polynomial division with long division, or you can also use the synthetic division. Long division will always work, so I will show you guys that in this video. If you want to review on how to do the synthetic division, you can check out the video in the description, all right? So let me do that for you guys. So I will open this long division bar and then put this down right here, x to the third power. And notice we have no x squared term. That means I'm going to put down plus 0x squared. I need to have all the powers ready, OK? And then we continue. This is minus 5x minus 2. And outside, we put down x plus 2. And now let's check this out. Just cover everything else besides the first terms you are going to ask yourself, what times x will give us x to the third power? And the answer to that is, we need x squared, right? So you see, x squared times x gives us x to the third power. x squared times 2, that's plus 2x squared. And now you see, all the x squared terms are lined up. That's good. Remember, when you are doing long divisions, you subtract. This minus that is 0. And do this carefully now. 
0 minus 2. So this is what? This is actually negative 2. And this is still the x squared term, right? And then bring down the next term, which is the minus 5x. And now ask yourself, what times x will give us negative 2x squared? Number-wise, I need a negative 2. And then I need to have x so that times another x, I can get the x squared, right? So that's for the variable. Negative 2x times x, we get the negative 2x squared. Negative 2x times 2, we get minus 4x, right? And then at the end, once again, we subtract like this. And check this out. Negative 2x squared minus negative 2x squared. In another word, negative 2x squared plus 2x squared, we get 0. Next, this is negative 5x minus negative 4x. In another word, negative 5x plus 4x, we get what? That will give us negative x, all right? And then at the end, we bring down the minus 2. What do I need right here? I need to have a minus 1, so that negative 1 times x give us precisely negative x. Negative 1 times positive 2, that's negative 2. And when you subtract this time, this is 0. This is also going to give us 0. We don't have any remainder. So this is how we can simplify this expression by using long division. In another word, we are trying to calculate the limit as x approaching to negative 2. This is just that, namely x squared minus 2x minus 1. Of course, now I can just plug in the value negative 2 into all the x. So we have negative 2 squared minus 2 times this x, which is negative 2, and then minus 1. This is positive 4. This is another positive 4. 4 plus 4 is 8, minus 1, and we have 7. And this right here is the answer. Okay, we are going to calculate this limit, and as we can see, this looks different than the ones that we have done so far, right? But the fundamental is still the same. We are going to plug in this value into all the x first. And notice, this is x approaching to 2 plus. What does this mean? You can just imagine x is about equal to 2.0001, alright? And that's what I mean to have x is approaching to 2 from the right hand side. Anyway, let's plug in 2 plus into all the x to see what we have. And now, let's see what do we end up with. On the top of the first fraction, we have 5 times 2 plus. This is technically 10 plus. It's a number that's slightly bigger than 10. You add 1 to that, it's 11 plus, right? So on the top right here, we have 11 plus. All right, now on the bottom, do it carefully. Here we do 2 plus square, so it's 4 plus, right? And then multiply by this 4, it's 16 plus. And then this right here is 5 times 2 plus, which is 10 plus. 16 plus minus 10 plus, we technically have 6 plus, and then minus 6, we have 0 plus, right? So let me put down 0 plus. Once again, you can just think about 6 plus is like 6.0001, and then minus this 6, we have a number that's slightly bigger than 0. And the sign is really important right here. And by the way, even though we have a 0 on the bottom, it looks like it. But we are talking about limit. And this is legitimate in some sense, right? When we are talking about limits. Anyway, that's minus the other one. This is 1 over 2 plus minus 2, which is the same idea right here. We get a 0 plus. And now, here's the deal. When we are doing limits, when we see a 0 on the bottom, and the top is not 0, you know the answer. It's going to be either plus or minus infinity, right? Positive or negative infinity. So here is the important part. You have to pay attention to the sign. Positive over positive we have a positive infinity, okay? And then the other one, bring down the minus, the one is positive. This zero is technically a zero plus, right? It's 0 0.0001. If you have zero minus, that means you have a negative number, right? But anyway, in this case, this is a positive infinity as well. And now what? Can we draw any conclusion when we have infinity minus infinity? No, this is just as bad as zero over zero. Right here, we must do more work, all right? 
And once again, don't put this down on the test. This is just uh, something you keep in mind. This is never the answer to the limit question, all right? And now let's go back to the limit to see what kind of work can we do. All right, we have two fractions. Why don't we just combine the fraction and do the algebra? So to combine fractions, we are subtracting. Be sure we get the common denominator first, right? So I'm going to factor this out first. And let me put it down below here for you guys. I'll put this down in black. So right here, we have 4x squared minus 5x minus 6. I will do the tic-tac-toe box real quick. And let me just tell you guys the correct combination. To get 4x squared, I am going to have 4x times x, all right? And then to get negative 6, what times 4 give me negative 6, right? I'm going to use 3 and negative 2. And I will put down negative 2 right here and 3 right here. This is correct because when you do 4x times negative 2, we get negative 8x. When we do 3 times x, we get 3x. Negative 8x uh, plus 3x, we get negative 5x. So we know this right here gives us the correct combination, all right? And the factor is going to be 4x plus 3. So let me put this down below here. 4x plus 3 times x minus 2. All right? So this is the factoring. And now, for the second fraction, we have the x minus 2 already. To get the common denominator, look at, I am going to multiply this fraction top and bottom by the factor that we still need, which is the 4x plus 3 on the bottom and on the top, all right? Okay, now we are talking about the limit as x approaching to 2 plus, and because they have the same denominator already, let me just put them together. This is going to be all over 4x plus 3 times x minus 2. And on the top, the first thing right here is 5x plus 1, right? So I'm just going to write that down right here. 5x plus 1. And next, do this carefully. Because we have a negative 1 in front of this parentheses, be sure you take the negative into consideration as well and distribute, distribute. So we have what? Negative 1 times 4x, that's negative 4x. And then negative 1 times 3, it's a negative 3, all right? OK, on the top, is there anything we can do? Yes, we can combine terms. As we can see, 5x minus 4x, we get x. And then 1 minus 3, which is negative 2, right? And what do we have ne left? This x minus 2 and that x minus 2 cancel each other out, right? So at the end, we are saying that the limit as x approaching to 2 plus, on the top we have a 1, over 4x plus 3. And as you know, when you cancel something on the top and something on the bottom, we are on the right track. And at the end, just plugging this number into the rest of the expression, we have 1 over 4 times. And I'm just going to put on 2, right? And then the reason is because when we are calculating the limit, at the end, we are talking about a value, right? So even though you put on 2 plus or whatsoever, you're talking about 2 at the end. It's just a solid number, all right? So you are trying to get to the solid number. Anyway, this right here, which is calculated, we have a 1 on the top over 8 plus 3, which is 11. And we have 1 over 11, just like this, right? And that's it. Yeah.